glad, I was so glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yeah. And as I was coming today, and just sitting and meditating on God and the goodness of God and, and to understand the power of worship. And that there's a difference between, we praise God for, who he, for what he's done, but we worship him for who he is. Yeah. And so this is, a, this is a time of worship. So as we enter in, just think about that, that, that worship is a lifestyle, amen. We wor I worship him on the bus stop. I worship him in my cubicle at work. So, so worship is, is it's a lifestyle. It's, a, it's something that you do daily. You don't wait till you get to the house of the Lord and, and worship. This is just an extension of what you do every day. Come on. And so this should be easy. This should be something that, that we just do naturally. The, the Bible says praise is comely for the upright so so to be able to worship so come on and join with us because God is a spirit and them that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth come on let's worship today comes from Philippians chapter 3 verses 7 through 14. Let's read them together, the Holy Word. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For whose sake I have a lot of things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, because like him in his death. 
and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Amen. Amen. Now that I have, not that I have already obtained all this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen. We come to a time when we come together as individuals and jointly to the altar. Come and leave your troubles at the foot of the cross. We come to the house of the Lord. And there's no other place that I'd rather be to tell the truth. There's no other place that I want to go but to the house of the Lord. So I can understand when David said, I was glad when they said, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Because that's a good place to be, in his presence. The Bible says that in his presence is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. But there's a scripture that I want to leave with you before we pray. And it comes from Psalms 126. It says, when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongues with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord have done great things for them. The Lord have done great things for us. Well, we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears, come on, shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And so that's a powerful uh, passage of scripture that we may reap in tears, but we're going to sow in joy. <laughs> it's a weeping may endure for a night, but, but joy cometh in the morning. Uh, anybody looking for a morning time? <laughs> I know. It's, it's, so we have to declare that thing to know that, oh, it's just a season. I, I'm just reaping for a little while. But I got joy, and, and, and the thing that I know of a surety, that I have joy on the inside. The joy of the Lord is not only my strength, but your strength. So sometimes we got to go in to the well, and we got to pull out some joy. Like 
like a river. Come on, go with me. We're going to go ahead on and pray, but I just wanted to leave that. So they were reaping tears, but they was going to sow in joy. And so we can look forward to knowing that. Let us pray. Most gracious and kind Father, we do bless you. And we praise you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your kindness today. We thank you that there is nobody else like you. We thank you for your faithfulness. That no matter what it looks like, that no matter what it seems like, that we can lean and we can trust in you. Some men trust in horses and some men trust in chariots. But we trust in the living God. And thank you for being a God that sit high and look low. And that you're acquainted with all our ways. You know our down settings and our uprisings. You know our thoughts are far off. And Father, I think about the woman with the issue of blood. She said, if I could but touch the hem of his garment. She said, I know I'll be made whole. And so Lord, give us that kind of garment touching faith today. Oh, we stand at the altar having one need and a, another need, oh God. But Lord, I just want to say, if I could just touch the hem of your garment today, I know I'll be made whole. And so Lord, make us, she didn't just say be well, but she wanted to be made whole. That means her spirit, soul, and body completely whole. And so, Lord, today we come at the altar seeking wholeness from you, seeking a touch from you, not just coming out of tradition, not just coming out of religiosity, not because we do it every Sunday, but, Lord, we come in a needy place seeking you for on the behalf of somebody else. You said of my people who are called by my name, would humble themselves together and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. You said you would hear from heaven. You would forgive their sins and you would heal the land. Now, Father, send a, a healing anointing today. Send an anointing that will destroy the yokes today. Send an anointing that will lift burdens today. And you said, you said, now faith. We need that now kind of faith. You said now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so, Lord, we don't see how you're going to do it. We don't know how you're going to do it. But, Lord, we just stretch out our faith to you knowing that you are going to do it. We say, like the Hebrew boy said, they said, oh, we, we'll go in the fire. It said, but when we go through, we know that you'll be with us. And even if you don't deliver, you're still able. And so they got in that fire, and there was a fourth man in the fire. And so, Lord, as long as you're in the fire with us, we're going to be all right. As long as you're with us, oh God, because you promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Now, Father, we thank you. Father, we ask, oh God, that we don't leave this place the same way we came in. But Lord, renew us, oh God. Send new wine and fresh oil, oh God. Send a word today, oh God. We, we need a word today. Bless your preach word. Well, you said, how can we hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? Oh, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach good tidings and bring good news. And so, Lord, we thank you for good news today. We thank you for the good news of Jesus Christ. We thank you that we're saved today and that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. No matter what else goes on, we're saved today. And so we thank you for salvation. And we bless you today. We thank you and we count it done in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Just do me a favor and give God a praise. He's a God that inhabits the praise of his people. Come on and give him a praise today.
worship you, Lord. This is a great time. How many of you having a good time in the house of the Lord today? Because I don't know about you, it makes me feel better when I'm amongst people praying and like-minded and feeling love and good. And this is a right place to be here at Trinity Baptist in Crystal Lake. Our morning hymn today.
Good morning. May we transition back to our seats so while we uh, begin our announcements. Good morning, Trinity. God is good, and he's worthy. Aren't you glad? Amen. I'm glad. Glad to be back in the house of the Lord. I also would like to welcome our internet family and bid you a wonderful, blessed day also. Copies of the worship service are now available. Immediately following service, please see the media team. It will be to your left, my right, if you care for a copy after service. It will take about 15 minutes. Children's Church from the ages of two and up will be immediately following the choir selection today. And let's not forget, Young Disciples class will be um, after service next Sunday. A gentle reminder, no food or drink allowed in the sanctuary at this time. Remember to tune in to WYLL 1160 AM at 7 every Sunday evening for Life Lessons with Dr. Bishop Love. The Compassion Center will be open today from 1 to 2. Um, some other announcements that we have is that Men's Fellowship will meet today immediately following service. And the Women's Fellowship, I would like to meet up with you also immediately after church. We will now begin meeting on the third Sunday of every month. And um, we will just meet briefly today to um, set up what our agenda will be. And our topic is going to be on revival. Um, we know that as individuals, we need to be revived. And we have a whole world out there that needs revival. So we're going to be focusing on Ezekiel dry bones and what if God could do what he did back then we have to stand in faith in hope that God can do the same for our world today amen okay um, on Sunday September 29th 9th please mark your calendars we will have our friends and family day um, further details will be announced next week the, mark it on your calendar and save the date. Um, at this time, we would like to welcome our first-time visitors and returning friends. If you are visiting us today, could you please stand so we can give you a Trinity welcome? Looks like everybody's home today and in the... Oh, we have a guest. Well, welcome. God bless. A reminder, um, I will be doing announcements again next week for Bonnie will be out of town. So if you have any announcements, please see that I get them by next Saturday. And if you can't, make sure that it's written out and give it to me next Sunday morning. I also briefly want to say what an amazing evening it was last night for the LFCF Faith in Action Banquet, and I'm sure Rev is going to speak uh, in a minute on that. It was a blessed event. Um, we are happy to be in the house of the Lord here at Trinity Baptist Community Church. Our pastor is Bishop Dr. Michael J. Love. Trinity is a teaching ministry of God's holy word. We touch we share, we love, and care, and thank God for this opportunity to praise and worship him. If you are looking for a church home, when Bishop Loves opens the doors of the church, feel free to give your hearts to Christ in your hands in fellowship. Amen. I do have to call up um, Evelyn. She does have an announcement to make in regards to um, the homeless that have an event coming up. Good morning. Um, I am doing a uh, fundraiser for the old firehouse station in Woodstock again for uh, Christmas this year. 
um, and would like to ask um, the church family for any um, donations of socks, um, brand new packages of socks, underwear, um, t-shirts, sweatpants, sweatshirts, or gift cards to Walmart or Target. Um, this year, the, um, they've asked me to do it a month early, so I have to have the donations uh, and gifts ready by uh, the week before Halloween because they are going to be closing uh, at the end of November. So um, the, um, uh, there was a um, donation made to PADS, a building donated to them in McHenry, so the PADS on Kishwaukee Valley Road will be moving to McHenry um, either in December or January, but the old firehouse station um, is uh, a little separate from that. So these men and women um, will be... Um, out um, on the streets again um, for the um, by the end of the year. The old firehouse station, though, I just want to say, um, does give these these homeless uh, men and women a place to go Monday through Friday. Um, hot showers, free haircuts, help with um, the paperwork for uh, medical assistance, um, and uh, to find homes. So um, this is a great place for them and. Uh, to have it close is, is going to be a great loss, too. So uh, any donation, any um, help that you can provide will be greatly appreciated this year for them. So thank you. Amen. And um, by next week, we'll have a list in, and there'll be a place out in the narthex where you can bring your donations, too. So keep that on your list, and uh, um, let's help provide for the homeless um, for the upcoming um, cruel winters that we get up here. Um, thought of the week. Of, I was gone for uh, a couple Sundays because I was traveling, and I traveled from Houston to Florida to uh, visit my sons. And my thought of the week is to pray. Because on that drive, which is about an eight and a half hour drive, that's what I did. I did nothing but pray. I prayed for cars coming my way, going on the opposite end, asking that God touch those in need and that hopefully somebody that day that was hurting would turn their radio dial and tune in and hear what they were seeking. Prayer is powerful. And I can to attest to it. Because as I was driving... I was coming through Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I saw something in the far right lane that looked like a wooden cardboard box. And something just said, back off. And as I got closer, I noticed it wasn't a cardboard box. It was a solid piece of wood. I prayed for the cars behind me that they might see it. Thank God they did. But something also told me, if there's one thing on the road, be cautious. There's probably something else. Four miles down the road, in the lane to my left, I noticed the same looking object, but it was oblong. I backed off. I moved to the right. A car flies by me, 70 miles an hour, and hit this thing that they probably thought was a cardboard box, but it wasn't. It was a solid piece of wood. That thing split apart and wood flew all over. And I don't know how it didn't get under my wheels. But God provided through prayer, through wisdom. You see, prayer gives us wisdom. And the Holy Spirit speaks. So pray like you've never prayed before. And listen to the still voice that speaks to you. Have a blessed week. Amen. So good to be in the on this Sunday morning. It's so good to be here. Let me welcome you, each and every one of you. I got my list of, uh, of welcomes. I got to get in here now because uh, we, we've opened up some new, uh, the Lord's opened up some new avenues for us to 
to reach through the media. And so as we welcome our live stream audience joining us for our worship on this Sunday morning, we also want to welcome the, uh, new audiences from Periscope Ministry. We're live streaming the message uh, from Facebook, live stream, not only from uh, Dr. Wyatt's uh, Bible study in the mornings, but now we're, we're rolling that over into the service itself and Twitter. And, and obviously our website is a live stream also, and uh, YouTube's being taped to be placed out on YouTube. So along with that, with the YLL and the, the Total Living Network TV cable broadcast, we just want to welcome you. Uh, each and every Sunday, we want to make sure we reach out and say thank you for tuning in, wherever you are, as we reach those hundreds of people uh, through the broadcast that we are seeing, uh, that we're hearing from. Uh, we thank God for tuning in on that day. It's a beautiful day to be in the Lord's house, and it's just good to be with family. Uh, just as a quick update, I want to thank God for uh, a fantastic evening that we were able to have down in Elgin at the center. And uh, as, as a Huntley Brown was, Huntley Brown was magnificent. I don't even know how to describe the anointing that was in that place. As we had, uh, as we had uh, uh, leaders and and worshipers and and kingdom worshipers from all over the Fox Valley join us on that for that banquet evening and uh, I just want to thank God because he put it all together and made it all happen and it was just a fantastic time together and and thank you all uh, for praying us up as we continue to do what God has called us to do in that that journey there uh, we do have a uh, uh, Deacon Bill hasn't gotten here yet, but we do have on our calendar men's fellowship immediately following in the chapel. And I'm assuming that the women will probably be meeting in the narthex for their gathering afterwards. And please mark your calendars for our, our, our friends and family day. We'll be doing that a little differently this year. Uh, we'll be in, in, indoors for the, uh, for the, for the eating and uh, est establishing the fun games outside. So we'll talk a little bit more about that and get a chance to, to give you more information. So pre prepare to bring your side dishes. Uh, again, we'll do the hot dogs and hamburgers and we'll just have a great fun day and invite some family, friends and family to come on out. As uh, Reverend Steve, we got you back in town here, uh, taking care of enjoying time with those grandbabies <laughs> on a cruise. You know, they, did they wear you out, man? <laughs> you got a little limp there. Has <laughs> hey, so the Lord blessed anybody this week? Come on. Has he done anything for you worthy of some praise? Let's worship the Lord with our giving. God bless you. Welcome home, sir. Thank you. Well, it's good to be back in the, in the house of the Lord with, with uh, fellow believers Amen. who love the Lord. And uh, where the presence of the Lord is, there is freedom. And so we have the freedom uh, to love God, love one another, freedom uh, to give. And for this uh, opportunity to freely give to the Lord, um, I'd ask the uh, ushers to come forward. And, and before we take the offering, um, we just think about what a privileged to give, you know, to the Lord, whatever that might be. It's because, as Paul, I mean, as um, in the first letter of Peter, the third verse, you know, we, ha we have a living hope. We have a living hope. God is alive. He's present here with us. Jesus is resurrected. He's not on the cross. He is alive, present. The Holy Spirit is in, within us and in our midst. First Peter 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the, from the dead to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and will not fade away, and it's reserved in heaven for you. Praise the Lord as we bow before the Lord and, and prepare just to this small token of thanksgiving and thanks to God with our tithes and offerings. Lord, we're just so grateful 
for everything you have done, everything you are doing, everything you will do. It's good. It's very good because you are the God of all creation who sent Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the living God, the living hope, to be life for all who would believe and receive, knowing that that is the only way. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. We thank you, Father. Jesus said the Father himself loves you. The Father himself loves you. So, Father, as we give these tithes and offerings as unto you, thank you again for shedding your blood for us so that our sins could be forgiven, for becoming sin for us and giving us life and life to the full. Thank you so much, Jesus. You're so good. Please multiply these, these gifts for your kingdom work. And may we be the ambassadors for Christ that you would have us to be. In Jesus' name, amen.
That sounds like some that anointing from last night. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to uh, 2 Kings chapter 4. Uh, we're spending time in 2 Kings with the prophet Elisha uh, for uh, just a few Sundays this month. And for today, our key verses we'll have on the screen will be taken from uh, verses 27, an episode from verses 27 through 37. And 2 Kings chapter number 4. Our key verse that we, that we jotted down is verse number 37. It's the closing verse of, of this episode. It's a large episode, but we want to we hone in on the closing segment of it uh, with a fresh set of eyes, if you don't mind today. So 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 37. You found that in your Bibles? Can you give me an amen? Oh, I didn't hear y'all. Can you give me an amen? amen. Uh, there you go. The King James, I believe we'll, we will get the, uh, one of the versions up on the screen and we'll read that. This will be the New King James Version. So if you don't mind and you're able, if you could just stand with me, let's just read this one verse and set the tone for our time together uh, as we prepare this, to, to study this word. Verse 37 says, So she went in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she picked up her son, and went out. Let's do that again. So she went in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. Here's what I want to focus our attention on this morning. The series that we're, if you take your seats, the series that we're spending time in preaching on uh, for these Sundays is entitled Faith in Action, with an emphasis from each of these episodes from the prophet Elisha uh, that, that lays out clearly for us uh, some of God's uh, attributes and loving kindness. Our focus today really is on God's promise. Can I, can I get just a, a little bit more here, if you don't mind? Uh, God's promise. And it may be different when you begin to look at this episode, but as I begin to, uh, you, you certainly would focus in on uh, his healing power, or maybe his resurrecting power. But as I listened and spent time in study of this word and spent time with this Sh uh, Shunammite, unnamed Shunammite woman, it became clear to me uh, that uh, the, the key component of her message here is really God and his promises. So the background, as you, as, you begin to, as you begin to read and you pick up this story a little bit earlier in the verses, are that Elijah is traveling and he's, and he's prophesying, he's serving the Lord. And as he goes through Shunem, uh, he stayed with this, this lady and her husband on multiple trips. You know this storyline. I'm going to try to just summarize it very quickly for you as we get to the key verses. And so as he's staying there, her husband, she and her husband uh, really were moved and, and impacted by having the, as she calls, the man of God, the prophet, staying at their home as he's traveling and preaching and traveling and serving the Lord. And so she says to her husband, let's prepare a room that he can stay in whenever he's coming through Shunem. And he was always welcome, and he would stay with our family and know, he, know, know that he always has a home, always has a place when he's on the road. And so they prepared this room, and one of these visits, as the storyline continues on, indicates that Elisha uh, speaks to the, 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 the wife, and Shun, the Shunammite, and he says to her, what is it that you want? What is it that you need? And what can I do for you? And in that conversation, uh, he, the Lord gives him an, an unction and an insight that indeed there's a longing inside of her heart for a child. And so he speaks this word of prophecy to her in the earlier verses that God will bless you with a son. And in her heart, she begins to, to wrestle with that thing. She begins to question with that thing. They, they've clearly had difficulty in having a child. And in this process, she, 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 she basically says, don't, you know, don't, 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 don't give me a promise, let me pass this paraphrase, don't give me a promise that I can't hold on to. Basically, don't, I know that you're a man of truth, but, but don't, don't lead me on. Just don't tell me what you think I want to hear, but tell me what God is actually saying. And he told her that you will, you will have a son, 
And so she gives birth to the son as a storyline. It's all this early in the chapter. Gives birth to this son. And as the son is growing up and he's serving with the father, he's out there working, the child becomes ill. And comes back and he's, as he's sitting on his mother's lap, it's, the verse says that he passes, he dies. This is where the storyline begins. We really begin to pick up the storyline in that 27th verse. Because now she says to her husband, uh, I've got to find the man of God. I've got to find Elisha. And so basically saddle up my horses and give me who I need to go because mama's going to go find this prophet. My son is dead, and there's no other answer to the question here. There's nothing else that can be done. But I have, I'm leaning and, and, and relying on the word of God that has been spoken through the prophet Elijah. Verse 27 picks up the storyline. Amplified says, now when she came to the mountain, to the man of God, she clung to his feet. Gehazi came to thrust her away. Gehazi is his, his, uh, his assistant, Elisha's assistant. But the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is bitter and vexed within her. And the Lord has hid it from me and has not told me what this is about. Then she said, did I not desire a son of my Lord? And did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, gird up your loins and take my staff in your hand and go lay my staff on the face of the child. If you meet any man, do not salute him. If he salutes you, do not answer him. The mother of the child said, as the Lord lives and as my soul lives, I will not leave you. And he arose and followed her. Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff on the child's face, but the boy neither spoke nor heard. So he went back to meet Geha Elisha and said to him, the child has not awakened. When Elisha arrived in the house, the child was dead and laid upon the bed. So he went in, shut the door on the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. Two life lessons I have. Let me give you this first one as we spend this time together as family. It's a little long, so just bear with me. When, the, when your faith journey from God's, your faith journey from God's promises to life's test and your reception of the promise, when it sometimes seems overwhelming, turn to and trust in God for the answer. Come hope for you today. When, I personalize this, when your faith journey goes from God's promise to life's test to the point of your reception, and in that life journey, you come across circumstances that seem like that they are overwhelming to you. Step in beside, step, pull up a seat beside the Shunammite, if you will. This is the time to turn, to, this is the time specifically to turn to God and to trust, to trust in him for your answer. This, this is the walk of faith. If you pull up this seat beside this woman and you begin to step into her, uh, step into her, her life, if you will, this life journey she's in, reflecting on the, reflecting on the hope and the, sin, the, the hope that she had for having a child, the, the fear she had of not having one, then the hope of the message that came from God through the man of God, through the prophet, saying that there's a, there's, there's a, a unique and great thing God's about to do in your life and for your family, to give you this son, to be blessed with that powerful blessing that you didn't never thought that you could have, only to have God deliver it unto you. And then in the process of, you know how it is, is we're bonding with our children, as only a mother can, as you're bonding with your children and you're raising them up to see this child growing and to feel the warmth and the intimacy of having your child with you that you long for through your life journey. And then to reach that stage where something tragic happens to your child. And you begin to, you can step inside of her pain for a moment and her anxiety and realize 
What are you thinking doing this thing? And realize there's some struggle going on here because her heart has to be broken momentarily. Her faith has to be shaken momentarily. There has to be doubt and fear that's overriding her logic momentarily. She's got to wonder, what, are you, what have you done? I asked you, I told you, don't deceive me in the midst of it. But here's what I saw. This is what I noticed. Notice that she didn't give up. Notice that she found when, when things hit and became overwhelming in her life journey, her faith walk, she still had the promise tucked inside of her spirit. And, and because of God had planted that promise inside of her spirit, she knew that the man of God has an answer for her in the midst of her, of her journey, in the midst of her, her, her wrestling moment, if you will. Can you feel that? Can, can you feel a little bit of what mama's going through right now? She responds to her husband, basically, I'm, I'm going to see the man of God. I'm going to see the man who gave me God's promise for my life and saw it fulfilled. I, I've started, the journey has started. We've seen the promise answered. We have a son, uh, but we haven't seen the purpose fulfilled because the, the question becomes, well, now, why did you give me the son only to have the test of life remove it from me, remove him from me? And you, she's got to be answering, is there more to this journey? There's got to be more to this journey. There's got to be an answer to this question that's longing inside of her heart and her husband's heart about what's the next step. And so I love, I love, the, <laughs> I love the steeliness. I love the unction. I love the, 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 the holding on to the faith component here. Even though the answer is not clear to her, she, she steps out and says, it's time to saddle up the horses because I'm going to Mount Carmel to see the man of God. My hope has not been extinguished to the point that I can't see that God can possibly do something here. And, and, and maybe she's got a little history on her side because Elijah had already, had already done some raising, of, it's demonstrated that God is able to raise the dead through his prophetic work. And Elijah had asked him for a double portion of his anointing. So I love that she jumped, that she basically got busy, got on her horses, and, and went toward the man of God, committed that she was going to get an answer. And when she gets there, the, top, the Bible, Bible tells us that she, she again, she, she, she falls on his feet. She comes to him in a, in, a, in a prostate position. She comes seeking his advice, comes seeking his, his heart, his care. And in this whole process, the Lord is working here, working her through uh, this season of testing. Anybody in the house know that in, in, in most cases, if not all cases, when, when you step into God's promise for your life, uh, there tends to be testing. There tends to be testing. The thing that I love to hold on to while I'm walking through the test of life, as I'm, as I'm even asking the questions of the Lord, what does this mean and what's the purpose behind this and, and why... Why do we go through some of the things that we go through? Why do we experience the ups and downs of life? And what is it, what is it that you're unpacking in the way of our faith walk that you need us to, you need us to understand, you need me to understand? But when, when, I, when I get into those moments, and I, I love to ask those questions because I know that God is listening. I know that he cares. I know that he has an answer for the prayer. And, and he just invites us to come into him intimately. He invites us to draw near to him. He, he, and he invites us to... To, to be family, to be the children that we are, and let him work inside of us. The wilderness moment is not designed to crush us. Can I talk to somebody in the house? God has this fabulous way of building us in the midst of that. And so when, when we go from the promise to the test, I believe it's important for us to keep in mind that the God of the promise is absolutely faithful. So there must be something that he's, he's working in and through us as he, as he utilizes life's circumstances in our faith journey to not only draw us closer to him, but to make us stronger in our walk of faith. And as he makes us stronger in our walk of faith, he is also preparing us for even greater things that are to come. She falls at his feet. He sent Gehazi out there and said, don't, no, don't stop her. You let her come. 
you let her come. Because God hasn't revealed to me exactly what it is she's still dealing with. And he knows that God is in the, mix, in the midst of this thing. God is working something out in this thing. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, an illumination or a revelation that's about to, be expo- about to be shared that not only blesses her, but blesses Elisha, blesses Gehazi, blesses everybody in the audience, and blesses us today as we read it. And so in that process, as she comes to him, I, I, I love the way she asked the question when she says, did I, did, I, did, I, did I not say, don't deceive me? She's leaning on the promises of God in the midst of the difficult moments in life. There's a word in there for you. There's, there's some wisdom in there for you and me. Because even if we can't see, even when we can't see the outcome, even when we can't understand the reason for the things that are happening, the tests that come, there's something God is doing that we, we may not ever get a full answer to until we see him face to face. But God is doing something powerful. He's working something out. And, 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 and he's strengthening us for the moment. And in the midst of that, he knows that, he, God knows and wants us to know that even if it doesn't work out to our satisfaction on this, this side of the earth realm, that for the believer, there's always something heavenly that we know we're going to. There's a, there's, a, there's a perfected state that we're going into called heaven. And all of our pains and all of our anxieties and all of our sorrows and all of our tears will be wiped away. There's, there's an there's, there's a eternity that's got our name on it that we can look beyond is the test and the pains of the day. She comes. She asked the question, <laughs> Is, basically, the question is, is the promise still intact? And Elisha tells Gehazi, you, you get on your horse and you, you go to the boy. In other words, God is about to do something. God is about to make a difference. God is about to reveal his hand. And you hold on. So when, when wherever you are in this journey, wherever you are in this life journey, we, we, we all are working through things. We all are walking through stuff. We, we all got issues. That, because that's a part of life in this fallen world. You know, No perfect states going on down here. You know, when, when God is given a promise, you walk towards that promise, trusting the one who's promised it to you through Christ Jesus. When indeed the, 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 either the world throws a test at you, or the enemy throws a test at you, or you just find yourself walking into a test, then you recognize that God is even in the midst of your testing time. God has not forsaken you. He's walking with you through the test. And he's able to take care of whatever you're going through in your life journey. So trust the God of the promise. Trust the God of the promise in your testing. Trust the God of the promise while you're being tested that he will break you, bring you through and give you the, the answer to your questions in life. Can, can somebody say amen to that? Huh? Yeah, we got, we got, we, we're with her here now. We're with her here now. Call this human life. She fell, she went in, fell at his feet, bowed down herself to the ground before him. And then in 30... 4 through 37, it picks up the storyline. It says, now, let me get to the Amplified. He's gone, to the, he's gone into the house, Elijah. He's shut the door with the two of them, and he's lifted it up to the Lord. He's called on God because the power, that, the power is not his. The power has come through him, through God. Come to him and through him, through God. He's not the answer. The Lord is the answer. He's the vessel that God is using to stand on his behalf to make a difference in the life of this family, in the life of this child. And so verse, 30, verse 34 picks up the storyline. He went up and lay on the child, put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, his hands on his hand. And as he stretched himself on and embraced him, the child's flesh became warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up again and stretched himself upon the child's and the child sneezed seven times, then opened his eyes. Then Elijah called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her. And when she came, he said, Take up your son. She came, fell at his feet, bowing herself to the ground. Then she took up her son and went out. 
I jotted down this second. When God draws you near, when he enlarges your heart and magnifies your kingdom vision, he demonstrates his unfailing faithfulness and his unending love. Be grateful today. They say that twice. When God draws you near, enlarges your heart and magnifies your kingdom vision, he demonstrates his unfailing faithfulness and his unending love. Be grateful today. When you think about this process, it, it, I find myself thinking, this is, this is God fulfilling the promise. The visual of the contact that Elisha is making with the child, the, 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 the breath, the mouth to mouth, breath, breath to breath, the eyes to eyes, the contact warming of the body, all is a process following up from the prayer that he lifts up to God. Doesn't tell us what he said, but you can just imagine that he's asked the Lord to do what only he can do, bring life back to the child, fulfill the promise that was made, and show this Shunammite woman, mother, and her husband just how gracious and good and loving God is through this one act of faith. She didn't give up on it. She didn't give up on it. And God had rewarded her, first of all, with the child because she'd been faithful to the man of God, we believe. And then now, in her faithfulness, in her faithfulness, is, 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 she held on with that mustard seed type of faith. And God is now rewarding it. And the breath came back. The child sneezes <laughs> the number of completions seven times. He rises up. Life comes back to the limbs. Death is no longer in control. Like God is in control. Always has been. Always will be. And he gets new life. Here, here's, what I, here's what I want you to pick up out of that. How God has this unique and intimate way in the midst of our testing and our journey of drawing us, <laughs> drawing us in our faith walk close to him. Uh, teaching us the importance of leaning on him. Showing us the power and intimacy of, of, of trusting intimately in him. This is, this, is not the, this is not the shouting moment in the church congregation. This is a behind-the-door moment when it's just you and God. And, 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 and then there's nobody there to talk to about your issues uh, but the Father in the precious name of Jesus Christ. This is, this is on this side of the cross, the Holy Ghost moving inside of your heart type of moment. It's that nobody knows the trouble I've seen type of moment. Where when you get to open up your heart and pour out to the Lord just what you're going through in, in language that you don't have to parse and make perfect. You can pray the scriptures or you can just moan and groan and let the Holy Spirit interpret it. This is the kind of moment, church family, when it's just you and the Lord behind closed doors in your prayer, meditating, uh, reading moments, uh, intimate moment with God, when you, you, you can just not only lift your voice spiritually to him, but open up your ears so you can hear exactly what he's got to say to you. This is when God is talking to you and nobody else is listening. And he's got you all by yourself in that room. And he says, I, I, now you and me, my son, my daughter, talk to me, listen to me, and let's, let me give you my heart. Let me expand your heart for God. This is that intimate moment, church. This, this is that moment that transforms you in the midst of your walk of faith and rises you above the test of life and helps you to understand that God is sovereign. He's in charge, and he's bigger than anything that you can possibly be facing out there in your journey. That, that's that moment. That, that's that moment. And, and, and he has this way magnificently of, of, of through the Holy Spirit, moving inside of us, of letting us feel his, his closeness, and letting us hear, hear, hear his heart as he enlarges our heart, uh, expanding, magnifying, expanding our vision so that we can see beyond the logic of our everyday situations in life. Because if it was just, what do I do now? 
the Shunammite woman, I've got a, I, I got a son who has died, then, then the question on the table is, how do I go to the next step of preparation for burial? But if God's in the mix, then her preparation moves from what she sees to asking, what is God doing here? What is God doing here? And what is God's purpose here? And how is it fulfilling God's plan here? And if I believe God for the breath I take and the strength I have, and the vocation that I'm doing, if I believe God for the house I'm in, and the clothes I wear, huh? and, and, and the food I eat, if I trust God for, the, for my ability to pay the bills and, and to take care of my children, if I, if I believe God that he's protecting me when I sleep at night and when I get up in the morning and when I get on the highways, if I trust that God's got all my intimate details wrapped up in his arms and in his hands, then this situation cannot be too big for the God who created the universe and then loves me as one of his children. Surely God has an answer for the stuff I'm dealing with right down here. Right, right down here. Take me into your closet, Lord, and give me my teachable moment. So that when I step outside, I step outside a man or a woman who now has learned to trust you more and walk in faith. My heart has been enlarged. My mind has been expanded. My vision, kingdom vision has been expanded. And I know because I know that I know that I know that you love me unconditionally and unendingly. And I'm thankful today. Man of God says, your son lives. Your son lives. She went in, fell at his feet, bowed to the ground, took up her son, and went out. End story. God could have done this any way he wanted to do this. You saw, you, we've seen Jesus come and heal from a distance. We've seen him speak a word. We've seen him put his touch. And life was given back. I can hear Jesus echoing in my ears. I am the resurrection and the life. And the same God who can do such miraculous supernatural uh, things in the life of these Old Testament characters, these New Testament characters, is the same God who loves you so much that he sent and gave his only begotten son. I got to get somewhere near the cross. The same God who would not leave you hopeless or hapless without a way to be back in the family, but Send Jesus that he would pay the price for your sins and for mine. The same God who would have him stretch out his arms and, rise and give his life and then rise up on the third day that you would have the hope of life everlasting. This Jesus says, I am the I am who is the way, the truth, and the life. This Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I am the doorway. This Jesus says, there's no man that can come into the Father except by me. This same Jesus said that you are my child when you believe and accept him as Lord and Savior as, and, as, and for your life. And no matter where you are in the midst of your journey, no matter what things you're encountering in life's, in life's good times and life's bad times, this same Jesus who now has sent the Holy Spirit, that now has the Holy Spirit representing him and dwelling us, is, is the one who will walk with us and, and abide with us and, and, and stay with us in the midst of our journey. And when you face that moment, in life, if you haven't already faced one, live just a little longer. When you face that difficult time, that, that, that struggle moment, that doubtful moment, that fearful moment, then watch how he steps into your testing time and bring healing and bring comfort and bring joy and bring you to the point that you'll get a, we'll get a better understanding of what he says, Paul says when he says, God is able to make all things work out for the good. 
to the call to them, who, to those who love the Lord. He's able to take your pain, your pain and mine, and turn it into a proclamation of the good news and saving grace from God. She picked up her child, her son of promise, and she went out, faith enlarged, heart restored. Vision for God expanded. Because if God can do that, then my goodness, what would he do in the days ahead in your journey? Father God, thank you so much for giving us this, this short period of time today in this block of scripture. As you speak to our hearts, you bless us with your word and your understanding. Thank you, Lord, for opening up our eyes and giving us a mind and a a heart to be in your home today. Thank you for bringing people across our path that we can share this good news with, that we can love on in the precious name of Jesus, that we can walk with in this faith fellowship. Thank you, Lord, for opening up our eyes to the opportunities that you have laid out in front of us through your promise. Give us the faith and the strength to walk boldly toward the promise that you've laid out for our lives. Trusting you in each and every segment of the day, of the journey. And when the tests come, Lord, help us to keep our eyes on you and lean not onto our own understanding. And in all our ways, we want to acknowledge you. So fill our hearts with thanksgiving, Lord. Continue to strengthen our walk of faith with you. Let our praise not only come from our lips, but let it be demonstrated in our life. We love you, Lord. And we stand ready to give you all the glory and the honor and obediently serve you. In Jesus' holy and precious name, we pray it all. And we give you thanks. As God's people in the house say, amen doors of the church are open. The invitation is for membership is extended as a new member of directors come. Let's just stand for a moment. <clears throat> if you're hearing the Lord speaking to your heart, we want to invite you to come. If you're seeking a church home family. You ought to know him. You ought to know him. The doors are open. The invitation is extended. fellowship time. Come in and join him. The ladies are meeting as I'm having a short meeting, I believe, in the narthex. With our heads bowed, with our eyes closed, our hearts humbled before the living God, lifting our hands to him in praise and assuming an attitude of prayer. And now unto him who is able to keep you and me from falling 
and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now, henceforth and forevermore, let all God's people say, Amen. Holy. in three persons. God bless you. God keep you. Give somebody a holy hug before you leave. Invite somebody to church.